Engaging with nature provides all sorts of benefits, but kids from communities of color have a more difficult time accessing those benefits. Thanks to ELSO, a number of those children in the Portland area were able to experience the benefits of nature this summer. And on this segment of Community Hotline, we'll find out how ELSO is also responsible for transforming that interest in nature into environmental social justice programs for high schoolers. With us today to talk about ELSO is Jamie Newsom, Program Director of Wayfinders and Tap and Roots, and Jackie Santalucia, Program Director for Your Street, Your Voice and Empower Her. Welcome to Community Hotline, ladies. Hi, welcome. Hi, thanks nice. for having us. Yes, you're welcome. It's nice to have you here. So Jamie, let me start with you. Could you uh, talk a little bit about the Wayfinders program in just a few sentences? Like what is the, what is the goal or the, or the main uh, mission of that particular program? Yes, yeah, so for Wayfinders, the main mission for us is that we, per, uh, we educate our black and brown youth about outdoor STEAM education um, through a lens, through a cultural lens as well. So that's our main goal. And for Wayfinders, especially, it's an affinity space for our black and brown youth. So this is where they can come, feel connected to the outdoors, but as well as feel comfortable enough to be themselves. Yeah, so the, the kids that get involved in these programs, um, what ages are they and what and, and who are the kids who are the kids that come are they are they portland area kids are they from all over the state who, who do you have there yes yeah, so for our ages they are grades kindergarten through eighth grade um and then they come from portland and the close surrounding areas so like hillsboro we have a couple kids come from there we have kids come from close around like uh, kairos is a big partner of ours uh -huh come from Kairos, as well as Alder, um, Rosa Parks Elementary. Those are some of our big elementary school partners that a lot of our kids come from there. And then, and then as well as a lot of these kids come from word of mouth. Uh, they get told from the community members or just some friends and families. So it's a great mixture of all, all of those. I imagine word of mouth is the way to do it because if, especially if the kids like it, then they're going to tell their friends and their friends are going to tell their moms and dads. <laughs> Next thing you know, they're, they're there. Yeah. So um, it's, it's, it's about communing with nature and getting engaged with nature, but there's a lot of learning going on as well, right? Yes. What, what kinds of things do you do to, to teach the kids um, how to be, I assume you teach them how to be good stewards of our environment and, and um, you know, what, what other kinds of things are important that you teach them during these, these sessions or your camps? So the biggest thing is just getting these kids outdoors, um, especially with this past year, they've been stuck inside. So my main goal this summer was to get them outdoors and to get them having fun, being kids again. So uh, some fun things that we did this past summer is something new was squid dissection. I was able to teach all the camp guides how to do it. So then they were able to do it with our kids. Um, the kids liked it. It was something different. And we did it with all age groups, uh, regardless of how young the kids were. We were able to adapt to that program to be able to teach it with all of our grades. Um, and then we did garden pots. They were able to design some garden pots and plant. And the cool thing about that is Jackie actually came out and was able to do some educating in our garden. And she can tell you a little bit more about that, but it was great that we can combine our programming together and be able to teach the kids uh, an array of different ways. So those are just like a couple of the programmings that we did, but we try to do everything outdoors, get the kids outside, having fun, playing, but as well as learning. And then the cool thing is that they probably don't realize that they are learning probably because they're having so much fun outdoors. So I make learning fun. That's not the best way to do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So how does that work for you, Jackie? You, you usually work with the older kids, don't you? Or the teenagers, the high schoolers? Yes. Um, yeah. The programs, Your Street, Your Voice and Empower Her are usually for 14 to 20 year olds, but it, this was such a wonderful collaboration. Um, and we built out an arclet with a, a series of 18 garden bed, raised garden beds that were at the location where camp is being held. So um, the Wayfinders crew got to make sun tea out of the herbs and we, we made sal fresh salads and they got to go scavenger hunting to see what was harvesting. So it was just a really beautiful collaboration. And also too with Wayfinders, um, 
they do so many field trips. And so we did a lot of swimming in the rivers and going to the coast and all kinds of things. So it was just wow. really beautiful. That, that sounds great. So how, how much were you involved in the summer program? Then? Not very, not at all. Just as a guest, guest, yeah. just as a guest. A special guest, a special, <laughs> uh, special celebrity guest there. No, no absolutely no, no. not. The, 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 the kiddos are the celebrity guests. Yeah, yeah. I, I bet they love it. I bet they really do love that. So, um, well, then tell me a little bit about, about your program then, uh, Jackie. You, you have a couple different programs that you run. Um, tell me about the Your Street, Your Voice. Because that's yeah. it's environmental, but it has, it's a different... So, a different take yes. So, Your Street, Your Voice and Empower Her are, are both um, project-based learning programs, either after school or in class, that are looking at real projects, built environment projects, that is introducing design as a tool for racial justice. And it's centering youth ages 14 to 20 that are Black, Indigenous, um, mm -hmm. students of youth of color in the Portland metro area. Um, however, because of this year, we were really fortunate to do virtual. So we actually, we've expanded our reach and have gotten a lot of students from across the country and across and um, across the state of Oregon. Yeah. So the programs are really um, centered, very similar to Jamie, and this is just the ethos of, of ELSO, um, culturally competent and culturally relevant. So oftentimes the impetus of ELSO and Your Street, Your Voice and Empower Her is um, rebuilding relationships with communities of color with the natural and the built environment. And so oftentimes, people of oppressed groups have been ex designedly excluse, excluded out of, out of making decisions in their communities, whether that's in the built environment, whether that's access to outdoor spaces. And so these programs, I think what's really beautiful of Jamie and I working together is that we have a large reach of an entire like lifetime of students from being five years old from kindergarten all the way through, um, all the way through high school and even whatever they're going to be doing after graduation. So whether that's going into a job career path or um, doing any type of higher education to do more professional studies. I, I'm quoting the professional studies piece because one of the things that we do is we know all of our students from ages five to, to 20 have innate knowledge and an innate relationship with the environment, whether that's a built environment, whether that's the natural environment. And so I think what we love to do is just creating spaces where students feel comfortable to just explore and experiment and really unlock that lived expertise that they have. I love that. And I, and I love also that you, uh, you don't limit the environment to nature, to outdoors, because a lot of people just think, you know, it must be all about, you know, being out in the woods or something or being on the river, but it's your environment is, is you know, where you are. So I, I like that. They must do a lot of, um, you must do a lot of working with them on, on critical thinking and those kind of things about how to, how to really uh, yes. figure out what issues are important and, and what affects their lives. Absolutely. So my background, I'm an architect. I've been practicing for 15 years. So the built environment and design in general is critical thinking, I think often. And any type of environmentalist work is critical thinking. Um, I, I don't remember the statistic, but I think it's 90% of our time is being in the indoors. And we've experienced that even more during COVID. And so what your environment is, it's the space that's surrounding you. And when we are very, very young and in every moment in our life, we are being impacted by the environment around us. And oftentimes in communities of color, they don't get to choose their environment. They don't have the choice or agency about that. And so oftentimes it negatively impacts them because they didn't have any um, agency or choice to have any type of decision or, or power and control of that. And so I think it, we think about the environment natural and built as completely integrated. It's just the spaces that you occupy. Yeah, I think that's great. And, um, and you're right, you know, if you've never been asked to participate in any of those decisions or policies or anything else, and you know, you don't have, you don't have any say in it and you just have to deal with what you have to deal with, but that's, you're changing that and getting them to think that way. I imagine probably Jamie, even from, you know, when they're uh, the kindergartners, you get them thinking that way that, you know, we do have some control over this and we do have some power over, over our environment. Do you find that, Jamie, do you find um, what, 
uh, tell me, tell me about some of the kids. How is it, what is their reaction to being out there? Some of the kids maybe that don't get out in nature hardly at all. Um, do you, do you find that they are, are some of them scared or are they mostly just loving it or, or what's their reaction? I would say most of them are loving it. Most of yeah. them really enjoy um, doing the trips and tours that we do. This past summer, we went to the zoo. They have this amazing program, excuse me, program called Zap, which um, is a program for when we arrived at the zoo, we were met by a, a group of teens of color and they actually led our kids around the zoo and were able to provide an amazing experience for our kids. And that's the biggest thing about Wayfinders is that when we do have guest educators, we try to prioritize the black and brown guest educators just so these kids can look at, see these guest educators and possibly see themselves. Yeah. And so and see role models, somebody that yeah, they might want to be models. like. Yeah, yeah. Really, and see something to where like they can, they can do what they're doing when they get older. You know, the, it's limitless what they would like to do when they get older. Well, the the both uh, both of those programs or all of your programs, they uh, really expose the kids to a lot of career opportunities that perhaps they never would have thought about or even knew existed. I would imagine. Do you talk about that? Do you talk about careers at all, or do they ask about that, or is it just kind of a natural, um, you know, offshoot of the program? Yes, they definitely ask about that, especially for our internship. We, um, we have certain symposiums that we offer our interns to try to help them figure out what they are, how, where they would like to see themselves in the upcoming future. Um, the internship really focuses on the green sector. And so we have different symposium topics each month that kind of just give them an idea of where they can see themselves. And so with that being said, that those interns bring that into Wayfinders. And then as well as my programming brings that into Wayfinders as well, giving them different type of STEAM outdoor education, taking them on different field trips and tour sites to where they probably even never thought that you could do this as a career. Sounds, it sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, it sounds like something that would be appealing to most kids. You know? Yes, especially after, I believe the kids went fishing because we had a week of oceanography and marine biology. And so that week was filled with tons of outdoor stuff close to the water, swimming, fishing. There was a week of waterways where our older kids build a boat. And I think um, doing that kind of stuff, and they also sailed, they probably never imagined that they could even do a career like that. But we're, there was definitely a lot of kids during marine biology. They were interested in being a marine biologist after doing a lot of our programming that we did. It was really great. That's, that's very exciting, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what, uh, is, tell me a little bit about the other programs. Um, Jamie, you have the Tap and Roots, and then uh, uh, Jack, you have the Empower, Empower Her. What are the differences between Wayfinders and Tap and Roots to start out? Yes, yeah, so Wayfinders is a summer day camp. We also offer spring break camp that is just for a week long for the kiddos that are able to do uh, the spring break camp as well. Um, the internship, the Tap and Roots is actually a year round internship and that's specifically for black identified high school and college age students. Okay, and, and have most of them gone through the, the Wayfinders program or not necessarily? There was one student that we did have that actually was a camp guide for Wayfinders for many years, uh, for about three years, and she ended up uh, applying to be an intern. So that's something it's not a requirement, but it sometimes happens. Yes, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely sometimes happens. But that internship, like I said, is for high school and college age, black identified youth. Um, they came from actually all over Oregon. There's a lot of people, a lot of kids that actually applied and they were from all over Oregon. We did uh, select the kids that we did select actually lived within the Portland metropolitan area. And so this internship year round, we met once a month and we had to go from in-person to virtual back to in-person because of COVID, but we're able to offer symposiums that had topics. So for instance, we offered trauma-informed care as a topic. We offered implicit bias, microaggressions, uh, the power of story was a topic. 
we offered uh, a topic that had to do with college. So like college prep to, uh, to get the kids ready to see if they had any questions about college and what they needed to prepare. So those are just some great examples of symposiums that we were able to provide these kids. And little did they know it was slowly getting them ready for the summer work that they were gonna be doing. So a lot of those symposium topics, it's topics that I actually train our camp guides on, like implicit bias, trauma-informed care, microaggressions, stuff like that. So, um, but towards the summer, that's when they work closely with the organizations that are collaborative in this internship. And those orgs are the Blueprint Foundation, the Beam Village, Friends of Tryon Creek, and Elso Inc. So all four of us are collaborative in this internship. That's wonderful. Yeah, we just worked with Beam not very long ago here at Metro nice. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, um, Jackie, tell me about your, is uh, uh, Empower, is that, it's, it's just for women or, or girls that are female identified? Yeah, so Your Street, Your Voice was the first program and uh -huh. um, being in the architecture and engineering, construction and design industry, that is a very male dominated built environment industry. And so often the, I believe it's like women, femme, girl identifying folks as early as 12 years old drop out of STEM due to systems of patriarchy and systems of being bullied and, and gender roles and all of that. And so Empower Her came from a group of youth that have participated in Your Street, Your Voice prior that was looking for a space that was centering women, femme, trans, non-binary folks. So just to have one layer less of patriarchy to actually really explore and feel, feel comfortable making mistakes and feel comfortable right. having that type of experience that this is just an experiment. This is not like a end all be all thing, just to try. And so this past year for Empower Her, I think one of the, the wonderful things that we did was we had a series of um, virtual um, programs, but in the spring we were able to have students um, that or women, femme, trans, non-binary identifying folks to actually learn about construction. And so we we partnered with Girls Build and Walsh Construction and Anderson Construction. And all these students were able to to learn about power tools and they actually constructed, constructed our 40 foot parklet. And so the power of having that type of technical education it builds so much confidence with, with women femme identifying folks, especially during this time where we've had so much isolation and just like continuous trauma as, as a result of just all of all of the racial oppression in the systems that we work in. Right. So if you have the racial oppression, then you have the, you know, people that are are, you know, maybe harassing them because they're trans or, you know, whatever, that, adding all that up together and yes. just, you know, being female is. It's a lot in a yes. male dominated field. Yeah. Yeah. That's yes. great. So they'll have a lot more support than I'm sure. Yeah. That's um, just getting over that hump of having to go into a place that's male dominated would be, you know, that would be scary. I, I, I remember. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it, it's cross industry. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from the building industry, but it's a cross industry, of yeah, course. Yeah, yes, it is. So um, is there anything else that we should know about the program? If somebody is um, interested, if, if, if kids are interested in getting involved or their parents are interested in having them get involved in these programs, can they just go to the website and get more information? Is that the best way to do that? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So one thing I do want to share is both Your Street, Your Voice, and to power her as well as tap and roots these are paid programs so our we pay That's our right. students to participate and so That's it's a big differentiator because we consider our we consider our participants lived experts and consultants to to build the better better world that we want to have and so i think that it is also it eliminates barriers of entry to the industries that we want to be we want to be cultivating in and so I, I just wanted to make that note um so yes actually our programs are going to be starting up again your street your voice and empower are going to be starting up again in the fall applications will be officially online starting september 1st so go to our website check us out on social medias as well um, at at camp elso and at your street your voice and you can get all the further details too. That's, that's good timing for that. Um, and then uh, just one more question about that. The, um, 
you bring in guest speakers that you know people that are in the industry already right that um, yes. work with them yes very similar to what jamie was talking about in terms of having um, professionals or people and experiences in different fields and different industries every week we have guest guest instructors guest educators come in that are professionals um, centering of course professionals of color every program at the end the students present their projects to the public and then they mon they moderate a panel discussion called vital voices and so vital voices centers either folks that are part of the project that they're working on or have decision-making power of influences. So whether it's agency, government agency folks, developers, um, engineers, anybody who's involved in the building industry that has some has some influence, so students feel that their their voices are being heard to people who have decision-making power. Yeah. And maybe they're you know, establishing a network there, laying some groundwork for the future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that would be right. Uh, Jamie, what about you? Is there um, is there anything else we should know about the, your program? That um, you know, the intern program. When when do people apply for that, or the um, or for the summer camps? Yeah. So for the internship, uh, we are slowly closing. Uh, we're ending the first year. Um, at the end of August. So we're hoping probably within the next few months to open up those applications. Just have a few months of planning for us to get ready for the next cohort coming in because we're wanting to expand, have a lot more kids this second year around. So we'll definitely, I definitely will double check our website for that. And then if you do want to follow us on Instagram or Facebook, we do post that regularly of when applications are open. And then as far as the Wayfinders program, um, since we're going to have spring break camp coming up in March, that registration platform will be open beginning of February to go ahead and uh, sign up for camp. And the biggest thing about Wayfinders Camps, it does cost, but it's a sliding fee scale. It's based off of the family's income. So we try to make sure that it's equitable all across all um, stages. So that's the biggest thing about our program. And, and then as well as for the summer camp, that uh, registration platform for that should be open the end of March, beginning of April. Okay. And if there are people out here watching that perhaps want to support these programs, maybe they have a little extra cash and they want to support them because they believe in, in what you're doing. Um, can they go to the website? Is there a place to donate for those programs? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, on our website, if you just click on that donate button and then uh, it will take you right to where you can donate and punch in your name and everything like that. So yeah, you can definitely donate towards the cause. Good. You know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of people now that are really thinking about that, where they're putting their money, you know, their charitable money, their philanthropic money, and they want to help support the, you know, the Black Lives Movement or the, you know, the, um, you know, helping support our BIPOC neighbors and, and starting with the kids is a really good place to start, I think. Yeah, I definitely. Think place, definitely. You know. We will have, uh, we have community programs that are coming up. And the next one is actually going to be our harvest party. We did this last year, and it was a blast. We gave away a lot of free stuff for uh, to our community. And we're going to be doing that again. And that'll be towards the end of October. Uh, we do the harvest party uh, for Halloween and Day of the Dead. So uh, we kind of combine those two. And we do a harvest party towards the end of October. So definitely stay tuned for that that's going to be a big community event that we're going to put on sounds like fun okay we will do that thank you both jamie and jackie so much for sharing today about elso and about the programs you have there and um, we're really happy that we have people out in the community doing that work thanks very much thank you yeah, thank you, you bet. and thanks to our viewers for watching today i hope you learned something i think it's a, a great program and do check them out on their website okay, i'm monica weitzel we'll see you next time mm -hmm.